Hey everyone, this is a three-part interview between Sam from Teach Odontist and Dr. Hafiz from Scholars Dental. This three-part series will cover many great questions. Make sure to like, subscribe, and also check out Sam's channel in the description box below. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment. Hope you enjoy the video. What do you think about this constantly changing trends in AFK exam as well as in NDEV equivalency process overall? And uh, what do you think is going to happen in future? Or where do you see yourself in the future of all those international trained dentists who are in this licensing process? Yeah, so uh, let's start like with the changes. I guess mostly we're in COVID, but even before COVID, there were changes that were going to yeah. happen. You know, uh, we all, I was always looking at where is it going to go? And I noticed that um, even before the NDB planned to go prometric in 2020 or 2021, yeah. I think it was, but they had a plan to do that, you know, even before COVID. So that's why yeah. I start pushing for the online courses and I try to become, you know, you could say uh, just international with it so that there's no, uh, you could do the course from anywhere. I had to find a system that allowed people to do yeah. the course from anywhere at any time, even if they're working and work with their time zone. So that means you can't do it live, right? You have to, you have to find yeah. a way to record it, have them watch it for like some sort of structure, right? So we try yeah. to do that. And then now with COVID, you see how things are changing. Um, which changes do you really mean? Is it the, the, like, for example, the changes now for AFK are mainly the question numbers, I guess, but I think eventually they're going to go online. That's what I think their goal is, you know, what do you think about that too? Like, yeah, so the first thing they change is question numbers. Second is they might go pro metric all the way. So that might increase the frequency of the exam attempts. Mm -hmm. And I'm just more worried about those two backlogs of students. Now there's going to be a big number of students who are already like, you know, the December AFK exam was canceled in February. So that backlog would come now. And I, I'm feeling like there is going to be, it is going to be more competitive or mm. I don't know how I should say the cutoff, like earlier we were saying, why is everybody getting 90 plus? And I'm thinking now it would be like so many hundreds or I don't know. I'm thinking it might change a lot how it was earlier for, especially for those who want to go to university or even for those who want to just mm. um, complete the pathway. So do you think something is going to change this well, year? In actually, that you, brought, you brought up a good concept maybe is that, you know, how it's been, you could say the performance on the AFK has been going up year over year. And I believe it yeah. has something to do with uh, maybe people getting questions, right? Or so if, if the NDEB is restarting the process, I think that's not a bad thing. Like that's a good thing. You don't want yeah. the competition. You want to, you want a you know, a level playing field, right? You want it to be fair for everybody. So if you know yeah. the knowledge and you go in with these new set of, you don't want someone to go in and get like a high mark with the minimum effort of just memorizing something that they have from a friend that was just, I don't know, right? Like, you know what I mean? That's absolutely, yeah. And, and yeah. they probably didn't learn the depth knowledge that they're supposed to learn. So now yeah. they leveled the playing field, I think, and people that are at least learning the right way, like the, learning the concepts, right? What, regardless of what questions. Questions is not like the goal. I don't look at questions as the goal to study. It's a way to, to help you study. You should learn the concepts. Okay use the questions to go like, okay, I'm now practicing, I'm training my concepts. Oh, yeah. you're learning from it and it guides you a bit to go back and learn some more concepts and back and forth. There are some questions I tell people to memorize, obviously, because I go like, it's not worth investing your time in those concepts. Yeah. So you have to kind of organize that, but they're not, you shouldn't be just like, oh, here's the questions I memorize. I go and get this mark. Like it's, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't, the change may be a good thing for people that are actually getting educated with it, right? What do you think that way? I, I so agree with you and I feel the same way. Right now I'm in university, right? At Dalhousie University doing my DDS, but I did study for AFK. I got a high score, but I would give credit for that high score to some of the questions that I knew. And to the pattern that I was, that was so predictable that somehow I knew that this is what NDP is going to ask those same Dr. Haas articles, those same Dr. Looney videos, those same uh, uh, University of Toronto videos, like the DPS videos, and some answers were straight coming from there. So some of these patterns were so predictable, and I knew it from some other people who had a good experience in this overall journey. So that's not fair. I think that was an unfair advantage to me. And what you just said, that we should know the content so well, 
that we should be able to answer all these questions. So that is, that is, I think the ideal way of going in. Hats off to NDB for putting all the effort to make it fair for everyone. Yeah. I'm saying that's not important to do both. Like you want to use the questions. Yeah. You did your effort, you did the concepts and, and you probably did the questions. So that way you got both, right? Like it's, yeah. but it's, it's, you know, like, uh, there's probably, I'm not sure if you're, there might be people where they actually get questions, they remember questions and then they keep it yeah. within a group. Right. And yeah. that could affect the other people that are actually putting the effort, you know, and I just think it should be fair as much as, you know, like the people that did the most work that know the most yeah. and that are ready. And you could tell when someone is ready, like they know their stuff, you know, they feel like I've done everything I can. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. the questions are on the side. You should do them as well. If there are questions, obviously. Right. Yeah. yeah. So both, both. Yeah. No, you are completely bang on the point that, yes, it is. There are going to be some changes, but you think the main thing is NDV is trying to make it more fair. Yeah. for everyone so that's why the release and i think the release questions are eliminated now there would there wouldn't be any new release question set coming you think so i don't know oh. we'll see I, i'm yeah. thinking yeah. they might still yeah. they're going to use a new bank but you know so so the marks maybe are going they're elevating every year and i think now there's probably yeah. going to be a reset a little bit you know where it's going to go back to a regular like you know back then it was amazing to get a 90 right now it's like yeah, yeah <laughs> so maybe there's going to be yeah, exactly. a reset and yeah. um the 200 question thing doesn't really matter to me like 200 even better like you have less questions to deal with um some people could okay. look at it negatively right where it's like oh now only i have to i have less mistakes i'm allowed to make yeah but you have less, <laughs> if you think I, you can't look at it that way you know <laughs> like if you, have, if you have less correct answers you can make too uh, so it's like, that's you know, true look yeah. at it positively <laughs> less effort and so there's a lot of things with it uh but here's the main thing whatever they do with the bank you know they're going to ask about prophylaxis. They're going to ask about antibiotics. They're going to ask about, we know the question, like the concepts that are main, right? Like the science yeah. is not going to change that way. That's what I, I think. Right. So if you did, if you do the work, you should be able to answer the questions you know, at the end of the day, whether they're new or not. And I'm not saying there's no, you know, new questions that are really out of the circle, like really weird questions that you go like, what's this, right? There, there could be, Yeah. but you know, those ones I tell like students usually, you have to dodge those bullets. Like no one is going to, you should, you know, getting a hundred, they're trying to prevent, they don't want you to get a hundred percent. Right. So, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, those ones, maybe no one's going to answer them. Right. So, yeah. And the last part if that you did not uh, answer Ahmed is what would be your role in this constant changing pattern of NDV? Where do you see yourself as a part of this whole NDV process or for those internationally trained dentists? who are in this NDV process, where do you see yourself filling some gaps or fitting into some some kind of role? Mm. Well, we've always been adapting to whatever is new, you know, um, like even during COVID, let's say our students were, they had delayed exams. Uh, when they had delayed exams, yeah. we told them, here's a ticket, you can come, if you, you know, we gave them some conditions, but if you register, come back for a month, no charge. Just an example, right? okay. we're adapting, mm -hmm. we're adapting to things, you know, because you, usually you take a, course and you're planning to take the exam right after so yeah. when their exams got delayed like yeah I, I don't want my students to go to the exam without that final feeling support like that last you know month so we issued these kind yeah. of tickets for them saying that look if you go if you register for the exam you can come back for a month and we'll do a review with you you know and that's just to help you prep for the exam um so that's, that's the, the the concept yeah i hope that they so yeah. the concept is uh to be adaptable right you want to adapt a bit um so we are pretty much, you know, ready for that future. Like, I feel like we're, we're, we've got to the level where our course could be taken from anywhere in the world. We're shipping to anywhere. It's yeah. flexible enough so that time zones don't matter. The only part would be like the live sessions that you have to be on time, but we try to make the recordings more plus supported by live sessions. So in the future, we want to be whatever it takes us. Like we're teaching dentists what they learned from school. This is what they learned from school. Yeah. We want to fill in any gaps to make it complete before yeah. they go on to their exam. That's how I see my goal is, you know, in, in general, because I feel like it's doable, you know, like even yeah. since I was studying in school, I just was bothered that I didn't get it. You know, like I was like, what? Like, how come they're not, it's teachable. Like, why are they just giving me this yeah. to memorize? And I don't know what's going on with this thing. Right. 
<laughs> or maybe we were just too young in school. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's a different. That stress. is one possible reason we did <laughs> not know how, like, what we are going to do after. The, I did not know at least, like, when I was in school, I was just happy that I'm not in high school anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah, just yeah. happy to be in the university. <laughs> yeah, different pressure, you know. You're like, what's this guy yeah. talking about? Let's just finish. Like, so maybe that's a different, yeah. um, like, mentality we were back then. But um, yeah. No, the thing is, like, I had a pathology professor that was really good, you know, and I remember, like, I still remember quotes he says until now, like, there are things he taught, you know, about cells, and, and I still even use it myself. So it, it's it's doable if you have that, right? And yeah. that's what I'm trying to provide, that kind of teaching for all the subjects, okay. for students, even, you know, like, if we had a student that took the AFK course and passed the IMBDE exam, you know? Another one took okay. it past the, so it's, it's general. It's not just limited to one, you know, here's questions for this yeah. exam. So the future, wherever it goes, if it's going to go online, we're ready. If it's going to go, um, it's, if, if, if questions are going to change, like how much are they going to change? You know, yeah. let's, whatever field they, they decide to, to include, we'll, we'll, we'll research that, make a video, yeah. put it in our curriculum and we're ready. So we're part of that dental education system that happens after you graduate, if you wanna fill in the gaps that you had from university. That is an excellent answer, thank you. Yeah. yeah. The third question is one of the most common questions that many of you who are watching this video might already be thinking about. What are my chances to clear this AFK exam as well as the entire NDEV process? What are my chances to get licensed to practice dentistry in Canada? among all the chaos that is happening. It's, it's the chances, it's a hard, honestly, it's a hard question to narrow down on, but- uh, I agree that. <laughs> like, especially if you want to take into consideration the new, the new like situation right now, like with the pandemic, yeah. it kind of gets a little bit more tricky to answer. Um, I could just use the numbers that show the passing, the, the, you know, the past or history passing rates of on the NDB website, right? So if you see the AFK, for example, the passing rates yeah. are between 40 and 50%. They never crossed 50 in the last few years. So it's in the 40%. Um, the yeah. ACJ is in the 40%. Now the ACS is in the 30%, like 30 to 39%, right? So that you could kind of conclude for you, if you pass one, pass the other, your chance of getting through the entire process maybe is between I would say 40 to 50 percent, or 35 to 45 percent, if you want to, if you want to kind of like combine all three together. Would that make sense, kind of in a way, as a percentage? Yeah, that kind yeah. of makes sense. Yeah. So this means, you know, half the people are going to make it almost, right? And half the people are not going to make it. But this doesn't mean you'll never make it. It just means maybe on your first attempt you won't make it, right? Yeah. If you if you analyze the numbers that way, so. So the question is, why are those half making it? And why are those not other half not making it? I guess you could say, I think part of it is courses. I think the level okay. of people taking courses have been increased for sure. Like I yeah. know that for sure. But back then it was less people. Now more people are taking courses, making it more competitive. So what, what I think is happening is that, okay, some, let's say how many people do you think are taking courses in general now? Maybe, I don't know, I'll just guess 300 people. What do you, I don't know. What do you think? Is that? Would you think, well, like, if you calculate the institutes and then you go, okay, maybe there's 50 here, 50 there, 100 here, I don't know. But let's say there's I'm, 300 I'm, people. My number goes about, my, my number would be like about, about 500, I, th I don't know. Even more, because, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, 500 even more. people. And let's say who's taking the AFK at once is 800 maybe, right now? 800 yes, or something? Yes, yes. So, so you could say that's even more than 50% if it's at your number, 500 people. Yeah. More than 50%. My number would be around 40%, right? Okay. So you could say, like, around there is who's passing right now not that's not to say that everybody taking a course passes there could be people from not taking courses that pass and people from taking courses that fail but the majority yeah. of passers are people that took courses okay I, I i see that that the majority of them that passed took courses and when they when the other half fails and they realize hey this is not just an easy exam to go to just because you work 10 years or because you know it's not, you know, like that's the yeah. normal thing. That, it's not just something you just yeah. go to and wing, kind of. Um, yeah. When they realize that, those people on the next cycle, they become the people taking the courses. Yeah. You see? And then there's new people that come in thinking it's easy. And it continues, you know? So 
What's, what I'm curious about is when there's a time where most of the people are taking courses, what's going to happen? Is it actually going to increase the passing rate or are they going to fail more? Pe I, I don't know. Like that's something weird, but, but that's what I think is yeah. happening. What do you think? Is that, does that describe what's happening? You think in the environment? Like, I, yeah, that's what, that's pretty much actually uh, describes what actually is happening and maybe how, how, what we discussed earlier and maybe is trying to change the pattern so that it becomes more fair, maybe less dependent on release questions, maybe less dependent on previous questions those people kind of remember. So maybe that's the reason because the more people start joining these uh, classes or courses, the more it would become a small group or the privilege for that group to know more compared to other international it's student yeah, but yeah, yeah but still it's fair too right like if, if some students are actually taking more guided training they are they are like asking for a coach who would coach them throughout this process they are putting more uh how should i say organized effort towards the exam yeah. maybe that's a good thing too I maybe I, this shows how serious they are yeah i don't see it unfair to learn yeah right? if you get help from someone to learn exactly that, yeah but if, if there's a group let's say like a certain you know, I don't know, maybe a certain community or a group that they're keeping internal questions between each other that no one has or something like that. That gives the advantage, right? And they're not sharing that it with anyone. An, and yeah. they have it organized in a way that instead of organizing the effort to learn, they're organizing effort to get questions from the exam. That's an unfair thing, right? That would be- That's absolutely unfair. unfair. That's yeah. what I, so, so I'm more toward like at least learn everything. And if you get yeah. access to questions, like if you, if you did happen, you know, like, you're probably not going to say no. Like if someone, if you have a friend that's saying, hey, I have questions <laughs> here, you're not going to say no, but yeah. do your, do the thing you're supposed to do. And then yeah. you could do the extra. Like that's, that's, just, I want people to leave AFK with knowledge, not with luck. You know what I mean? Like, that is so true. That's a very well said statement. Yeah. Because you're never going to come back <laughs> to AFK. Like you're never going to open a pharma book after you pass. Let's face it. <laughs> Unless you go to <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably maybe. not. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> Still haven't opened. <laughs> Still haven't. <laughs> then you're yeah. a patient comes with this drug, you're like, you know, you don't Let know. Let me open lip and cut. <laughs> yeah, you got, or you gotta go Google it. But even if you Google it, yeah. it says anticholinergic, you're like, I don't know what that you know, like so you yeah. have to know this, I think. Yeah. Yeah.